Hey, what's going on everybody? In today's tutorial, I'll be covering how to set up a capacitive soil moisture sensor with a Raspberry Pi. Um, this tutorial will sort of build off a previous video I made featuring the ADS1115 analog to digital converter. So I'll leave a link on the screen and in the description below so that way you can go and uh, reference that video and get up to speed. You will need to follow that previous tutorial to the T in order to follow along today. Just a quick note before we get started, I just want to let everyone know that you'll be able to find the code as well as the official write-up on the website, and I'll include a link in the description below. So let's quickly discuss additional components you'll need for this tutorial. Uh, the only thing you'll really need is a small cup of water, which will be used during the calibration process. Other than that, you should be good to go. So let's move over to the terminal and get things set up on the OS. Okay, so I have SSH into my Raspberry Pi. If you're using GUI, you can just open up a terminal and follow along. It'll be the exact same process. And at this point, uh, I'm under the assumption that you've ran through the previous tutorial to set up the analog digital converter and have that set up and also pulled the recent code from the link in the description below. So you should be shown two files here, uh, cap calibration and soil saturation.py. So basically there's gonna be two parts. The first step is we're gonna calibrate the sensor using the cap calibration script, which will generate a config with the lower and upper thresholds for the device and then we'll run the soil saturation, which will give us the percent uh, saturation uh, on the sensor rather than just see the, the raw values that we're normally accustomed to. So if we quickly inspect the cap calibration script, I'm just gonna run through at a high level. We can go through the process. So in lines eight through nine, we're just initializing the min and max values. And then this block here, 11 through 18, we're initializing the analog to digital converter. And then block 20 is our first uh, calibration step where we're gonna check to see if the sensor is dry. So this is where you should have your sensor um, not wet and maybe like on a dry surface. And then we're gonna record the value and update it to the uh, max value so it's just gonna run in a loop and get the highest value and then record it and then once that's done um, you'll get another prompt and this is the next step where we check to see what the value is when it's submerged in water so it will uh, after you um, submit yes to the prompt it will do the same thing but it will loop 10 times and then keep track of the smallest value and then updating it update it accordingly. Once that's done, we just build a JSON um, object and we dump it to a text file and also print to the screen. And that's pretty much the configuration process. So then if we look at the actual script, uh, it's pretty similar to the the sample script provided with the analog to digital converter, the only difference really uh, is in line 16 through 18, because this is where we read that text script and, or the, not that script, the text file, and we import those values. And then we just have this function here on line 21, which translates those, the raw values against the threshold that we've set and then returns the percentage. So that way we know the percent saturation rather than just like a raw value slash uh, voltage. And then it will just uh, loop here and print the value. So that's pretty much how it works. So let's go ahead and see it in action. Okay, let me just clear my screen really quick. So the first thing we need to do is Python three cap calibration. If you want to hit enter, so we're gonna get the prompt as you can see, my sensor is not submerged. So when we hit yes, it should run through the process. So we're getting the raw values, as you can see on the screen, 11.088. So that's probably recorded. And then now um, we have a new prompt. So we gotta put the sensor in the water. So I'm gonna do that real quick.
So that's done, and then we just hit Y and hit Enter, and now we should see a lower value. So as you can see, we're seeing 9904. And then the printout shows us our, essentially our config, which shows the full saturation threshold, which is 9904, and zero saturation was at, uh, at 11088. So if we do LS real quick, we can actually inspect the cap config file. And we should see those values, which means everything is good to go. So let's just clear the screen. And then now if we run the script, um, we should see the percentages in real time. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, it's still in the water, so it should be pretty high starting. So yeah, so it's at 98%. Let me pull it out of the, the water and then it should drop And there you go. And a quick way to check too is to just grab the capacitive sensor in your hand and you should see it um, fluctuate a bit and then you know it's working. So yeah, as you can see here, I'm just kind of like messing with the sensor. It's giving us different values. So for the most part, if you grab it and make a fist, it should be close to 100%, assuming your palms are somewhat moist. And then if you let go of it and put it on a dry surface, it drops drastically, as you can see here. And there you go. That's pretty much um, the end of the tutorial today. So I'm sure many of you have questions at this point, like what are the usable use cases for uh, this platform. And the thing that comes to my mind that makes the most sense is some sort of moder monitoring system for your soil environment, for your plants. Um, but this is a very broad kind of subject as each plant has different requirements for their soil environment. So just off the top of my head, uh, don't quote me on this. I know for like that succulent plants maybe need 20% saturation in their soil, but your vegetable plants may need a much higher saturation level at um, let's say 40 to 60%. So you're gonna have to definitely do your own research and figure out to see what uh, your plants need before you go and automate things because <laughs> you don't wanna kill them outright or at least try not to. And then also um, it you can, sort of link this up to, you know, maybe a water pump or a lighting system to automate, you know, control of your plant environment. But this is really up to you. This serves as a good baseline to start with, and then you can obviously build on top of that. So I hope you guys learned something today and uh, you found this tutorial useful. You know, definitely leave a like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for upcoming content. Peace.